have an obligation to make sure that I'm around to continue doing these shows for you. So there's a little bit of peace of mind. Anyway, I thought you would find that whole process a little interesting. Kind of a nice day here, as you can see. Lots of cumulus. And the air mass is quite a bit drier, but there is definitely some weather going on out to the east of here in Alabama. Well, today we have a high-risk day and some dangerous storms in Alabama. Birmingham located right in this region here, and we've got this powerful cell just down to the south. Let me get rid of these overlays now that you know where they are. We're going to look at the actual storm itself. So this whole clear area, this is part of the inflow region. And back in here, we've got the mesocyclone and the forward flank downdraft feeding into the back of that storm. Storm relative velocity. Well, keep in mind the radar is up to the northeast of the storm. And we're showing very strong outbounds right there and some inbounds not too strong. So we may have to actually adjust that vector. Let me play around with that. Okay, so there we go. And we really need to zoom in on this storm because this whole thing is the mesocyclone. And down in here, looks like we've got a tornadic circulation. Here we've got about 70 knots out and quite a bit inbound. That's going to be about 83 in. So looking at about 150 knots of shear. So this is going to be quite a strong tornado on the ground there, just east of Ashby. Of course, by the time you get this video, it will have moved along. But for instructional purposes, I'm going to put a dot right where I think that tornado is. So we're intersecting it at about 600 feet off the ground. And going back to the reflectivity, yeah, that's, that's the debris cloud, the hook. So the air is basically flowing in like that into the storm. And probably the rear flank downdraft doing something like that there. And the forward flank downdraft edge up here, probably a tail cloud up in that region. And I would expect quite a bit of overhang in this area. You're probably asking, what's, what's overhang? Well, I'm gonna go up to a higher tilt and watch this area here when I go up to say 10 degrees. Yeah, see how that's all filled in. So that's one of the signs that we use to identify a strong and dangerous storm. If we go a little bit lower, we might be able to pick out some enclosure that could identify a very strong updraft punching up. I don't see anything like that, but if I do a 3D slice here, well, we're very close to the radar. We're getting in that cone of silence, but this shows you the overhang right there so there's probably quite a bit of lightning coming down in this region just ahead of the storm. And the actual tornadic circulation is back in this region there. So you're looking basically to the north and the left is out to the west. So here's a look at the latest image. Looks like the circulation may have widened out a little bit. This has uh, decreased some. It's always good to go up to the higher tilts, but we don't have new products for those higher tilts. You can see how it kind of jumps back a little bit. Anyway, very spectacular there. I'm going to put a dot right in the middle of that circulation that's going to be about right there. And check the spectrum width. And I can kind of see what might be some of the boundaries in that storm. This looks like possibly the, the old occlusion and maybe some new probability for tornado genesis in that region right there. So that would be where I would want to watch out in this region here. That could be a new, new circulation coming together. Then we've got another storm up to the north that also has a tornadic circulation in it. So there's the inbounds, there's the outbounds. Throw a dot in the middle of that, and that's certainly rain wrapped. A couple of storms out to the west. Those aren't really a factor just yet, but it looks like a lot of this is pushing east towards Atlanta. So we're going to have to be on guard for an active weather night in that region later on. The surface analysis 
late this afternoon looking like this. There's our powerful system moving through the southern U.S., producing those tornadic storms in Alabama. The main front looks like that's still holding on back in Mississippi. That front could be even further back, possibly back in here, because the temperatures are still holding on in the mid-80s. But as you go west, we get into some of that cooler air in Texas, and that looks like maybe mixed Pacific and northwestern origin. Out in the Nevada, California area, new system. You can see the southwesterly winds there at Las Vegas. That's classic southwesterly flow ahead of a strong weather system. And then we have the classic northwesterly winds out there in central Nevada indicating the passage of a cold front. And out in the mountains, the Four Corners area, we've got some snow showers in the higher elevations in that region. Kind of a split flow pattern with one branch way down here, another up there in Canada, and that's where we have this late season Alberta clipper coming out of Saskatchewan and Alberta. There it is, and then another system corresponding to that one around Quebec. A lot of this dr driven by a 1036 millibar high over Hudson Bay, and you can see some very cold temperatures. Five degrees at Churchill, five at Winisk, and 18 at Moosonee. On a day like this, we definitely have to take a look at the dynamics. And these heights and vorticity charts from the good people at Pivotal Weather, and I really do like these vorticity charts because you can see that the negative values on the legend at the bottom go way down into the negative range. A lot of weather websites don't do that. And I think the shortwave ridges are pretty important. All right, let's see what, what do we have here. We've got a large jet coming into California, some jet streak action there, Oregon, and that's kind of tied into that surface system that we find further down to the south. The stronger lift that's already passed over the Las Vegas, Lower Colorado River Valley area. And let's see, we've got this next trough in Texas. The main dynamics, well, up to the north, so we don't... We're not totally overrun by strong forcing in Alabama. That would lead us immediately to a squall line. So those strong dynamics being way up to the north, yeah, that's helped out our storms. So the jet stream running about like that. Again, this is about early afternoon. So if we take that up to the current time, we're going to get something like that. So yeah, the main jet streak up there near Memphis our big thunderstorms out here, way off on the right side of the jet. And one chart that I did want to cover was the high resolution rapid refresh. Let's see how that did. So I'm going to bring up the southeastern sector. I'm really curious. I didn't have a chance to look at all these model charts because I was on the road to get that vaccination. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock this on the current time, 23Z, and I'm going to pull up this model trend loop. So we can see just how things looked this morning and where we are now. Okay, so for this evening, it was forecasting a line of thunderstorms along the Mississippi-Alabama border. Well, obviously that's not happened. We've got tornadic storms way out in this region here probably did get that one right. So let's see how that evolved from this morning's run up to the current time. So the model's hanging on with that westward positioning. And then right around 19Z, like three hours in advance, it went for some strong development out there further to the east. That's kind of where we're about right now. And we compare that to the current time. You can see all the extensive activity in the Birmingham area and just a few stragglers back there along the Mississippi-Alabama border. So I guess in these situations where there's very strong shear, you probably want to bias the forecast towards the east. The key here is to understand how patterns could change and stay 
you want to stay grounded in that now casting you know always keep tabs on your products and I've noticed here in Texas in weaker wind regimes with less forcing the high resolution rapid refresh does tend to get things right a lot of the time MCS's high shear events that everything is out the window at that point keeping tabs on our big storm south of Birmingham it has moved very very quickly since I've been editing this video you can see how it kind of moves towards Calera and I think there may have been a cyclic redevelopment out to the east I'm not 100% sure it kind of looked like it jumped a little bit and you can see that tracking on off towards the northeast and then on reflectivity Yep, there's a big hook echo moving northeast, heads right for Calera, and then just tracks on up towards, looks like Wilsonville. And at this point, it looks like they've dropped the tornado warnings. Yep, pretty much gone, and we're left with a bunch of mushy junk at this time. However, still a few cells on off to the west. Not too sure they're doing very much. There's a quick check of our surface data. I don't really see any big problems down here. Looks like plenty of moisture. The winds are slightly out of the southwest, so that could reduce the SRH a little bit. You can see how up to the northeast on the Birmingham area, just a little bit of backing in that region, just a very slight amount. And you can see the gusty winds indicated by the red marks on the barbs which suggests to me that the low-level jet may be acting mostly on this area here and there's the 850 millibar flow does look like the winds are slightly stronger in the eastern half of the state figure we'll just grab a quick sounding there for the birmingham area and the instability not tremendous just maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred cape but that hook that hodograph is quite impressive lots of curvature on that thing and the lcls yep upper 60s dew points trailing off very slowly to low 60s dew points up at about 850 millibars and you can see that stp line right there significant tornado potential just over four and that puts it in the ef5 to ef4 range and it's been kind of a long day here, and I need to get this video out as soon as possible. So we'll just take a quick look at the precipitation fields, run that forward, and you can see a decrease in the coverage. So things actually look to be shutting down a little bit in the early evening. The model wants to form up this line right here, kind of reestablish itself, reorganize it. So that's coming out of these cells here. So yeah, we're going to have to kind of keep an eye on that. Could be some continued potential into the evening and then things do move off towards atlanta i think we still need to keep in mind our eastward bias so it looks like maybe atlanta getting stuff maybe about 11 12 1 in the morning so based on this i'm not too sure what these are going to do but it looks like we do need to keep tabs on those cells to potentially organize and we can see out to the south that inflow is really not wrecked very much. It's pretty good supply there of moisture that should continue moving to the north. And we've got those strong dynamics just up to the north. So, yep, I guess we'll just have to watch it and see what happens. And if I had to pick one more chart to look at, zero through one kilometer bulk shear. Does that increase or does that decrease? That's really the key. So running that forward, Looking at Alabama, looks like a lot of it gets carried up to the north by 3Z, but there's just enough of a tongue right here on the trailing edge that would have me a little bit concerned. So I would, I think probably Birmingham is not completely out of the woods. And it's really going to come down to what happens with these cells over the next hour. Are they going to get it together or? Or they're just going to continue dragging along up towards Birmingham. Well, we shall see. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that weathercast. I do need to let you know the closing credits have been changed. So 
If you're a Patreon supporter, please check for your name if you don't see it, or if there's a problem with it, please let me know. A lot of that was put together at midnight, and you know how work projects go at midnight. Mistakes have a way of making their way in. All right, so tomorrow's another regular day, so we'll see you then. Hope you have a great one. Take care. Bye-bye.